So traveling by small bus tours in New Zealand is a really great way to get the best of both worlds. You do a road trip around New Zealand with your friends without breaking the bank. Small bus tours also means that you don't bring the crowd with you. One of the amazing things about traveling in New Zealand is that you get to go to pristine places where there is only a few people at one time. If you travel with a big bus tour, usually you just bring the crowd and it's, it's just kind of skew a little bit that feelings. So a couple of uh, notes to get started with as we talk about the best bus tours in New Zealand is the fact that, well, since we are running New Zealand's largest online travel guide, we have had or, or have currently relationships with all of those companies. For example, Wild Kiwi that we're going to be mentioning later in these videos uh, currently advertise on our website. But this has by no means affected our choices or ranking and in fact it has helped us uh, know them better as we got to experience a lot more different tours around New Zealand. Also, um, we are choosing to focus mostly on small group tours in this video, so that will disqualify companies like Contiki, Kiwi Experience, Top Deck, as the vibe in those tours is incredibly different. Finally, we will be uh, talking about the nationwide offering of each of those companies. Um, they're kind of 20-day tours, if you will, um, as the same feedback will apply to their shorter tours and it gives us a better overview of their fields, mostly. Right, with that in mind, let's get started with the video. The format of the video will be a little bit different. We're going to go from number five all the way to number one and tell you a bit more about each of those companies and what makes them different. We begin with number five, which is Stray Journeys. Yeah, so Stray Journeys um, is uh, a small group tour in that they only have a maximum of 18 passengers, which is quite good, that's quite small. Um, and yeah, they do a nationwide tour, which, um, uh, oh, sorry, I said the wrong thing. It's not 18 days, I think it was 20, sorry. Uh, passengers. 24 passengers. 24 passengers, I read the wrong thing, sorry. Uh, yeah, so they have 24 passengers as a maximum in their, in their tours. Um, so what's really cool about Stray Journeys is that they have been around doing bus tours in New Zealand for quite a long time. They're very well established and they're still pretty much visiting like the same places that they've always visited, which are quite unique compared to some other places, especially on the North Island. Not so much on the South Island, but especially on the North Island, they go to places, for instance, like Blue Duck Station. They go to Oakuni, which is um, like an alternative town to do, say, the Tongariro Crossing that not many people um, usually consider for doing that. Kontiki does go to Oakuni though, but we said we're not talking about Kontiki. Yeah, yeah, Ko so for Ohoakune a small group still, tour. Yeah, yeah so um, yeah, Stray Journeys, especially like their, their strength is on the North Island. They do really good North Island stops, um, but then of course, we are talking about their nationwide tours, so they certainly do hit the highlights in the South Island as well. They have, for instance, the Milford Sound Cruise included in their tours um, that are like that sort of thing. So you are getting to see all those sort of places that you probably want to see on the South Island too. Um, and what else? Uh, yeah, so... So maybe we can give a rundown to uh, what are the inclusions that they have. Yeah, so the inclusions that they have um, currently in 2024, because it is important to note that inclusions that bus companies have had in the past, that is always changing. Yeah. And uh, I did basically, of 2024, I updated this last night, having a look at all their websites, seeing what, what is actually included nowadays. Um, this is what they have right now. So Stray Journeys, they include the Tepuya Geysa by Night Tour. So Tepuya is a geothermal and Maori cultural park in Rotorua. They have uh, e-biking on the old coach road in Oakuni. So um, this is a really different experience than any other tour that we sort of, any other inclusions that we've had, that we're going to talk about in the rest of this, um, out of the other bus tours. They also do a four-wheel drive tour at Blue Duck Station. Um, at Lake Anifenua, they, which is um, a very cult Maori cultural focused experience, they do workshops and a hangi tour. And uh, spoiler alert, quite a lot of uh, activity, a lot of, sorry, a lot of bus tours actually do this activity. So you will hear this yep. one again. And then they have the Milford Sound Cruise included. And then finally they are 
Um, they include the Cook Strait Ferry, so they do travel between the North Island and the South Island by ferry, and that's all included. And it is also important to note that their um, accommodation that they stay in is between three to four star hotel and lodge rooms. Okay. So a little bit more high end compared to maybe staying in a backpack hostel. All right, so when it comes down to other inclusions, so for the meals, all the breakfasts are included. They include one lunch and four dinners. Um, and yeah, their group size is 24 and their tour length is 18 days. They are the shortest on this list for doing the nationwide. So you're a little bit more rushed when you travel with them. Their current sell price is 7,000 New Zealand dollars, which is 699. Um, and that brings them to a price per day of $388, making them by far the most expensive on this list, which uh, brings them down a little bit on the ratings. Um, so some of the highlights of it. So Laura is going to do the highlights. I'm going to do the, the cons. So there's pros and cons, right? And as the French one on the team right here, I do have to say the cons as, you know, it's my job to complain. <laughs> All right. So go for the highlights. Yeah. So highlights is definitely the fact that they're, especially their North Island stops are very unique. Their um, motto, at least before COVID, I'm sure it's still the same, is, um, you know, uh, off the beaten track. They go off the beaten track. So that's at least still the case of the North Island. Not so much for the South no, Island. Not but, at all for the South uh, Island. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is pretty cool to see where they go in the North Island still. Um, also, yeah, like I say, they're very, uh, a very well established tour. They've been around in New Zealand for a long time um, and they do have, they are going a lot to the places that they've always gone to because, you know, it works. They're really good places, especially on the North Island. So, yeah, they've, they've got a good thing going. Um, so they, they're still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so when it comes down to the cons, so as I said earlier, they only do 18 days to do the entirety of uh, New Zealand, so that's a little more rushed. You, you're going you're gonna to churn when you have driving days, that's for sure. Um, they're using three to four stars of hotel and lodge rooms. Uh, this is still shared rooms, though, just do be aware yes. of that, so that's, that's the caveat on this one. Um, they are by, by far the most expensive one on this list at over $100 per day more expensive than anybody else that we're going to be mentioning. And lastly, there used to be a hop on hop of backpacker bus tools uh, companies around New Zealand and some of the habits do still remain in here into kind of like upselling things, etc. So do uh, know that. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is Straight Journey number five on our list. Next up, we have Hacker Tours, number four. Yeah, so um, Hacker Tours is, um, they have also been, they've ha got a very good reputation for themselves in New Zealand. Um, I will say something about <laughs> that reputation later. Yes, so they have built up that reputation, especially before COVID. Yep. Um, so things have changed since then, so we will talk about that a bit later. But um, let's just go over their small group tour size. Their maximum passengers per tour is 16, which is one of the smallest yep. group um, sizes on this list. So it's definitely good for that small group vibe. Um, and in terms of what is included in terms of meals it's only breakfasts there's no other meals included um, and then in terms of the inclusions that they have so sort of what you would usually be paid activities that you uh, have included in this tour is going to Lake Anifenua again um, to do the sort of Maori experience with workshops and hangi. Um, so yeah, that's one thing. Uh, they go to Tepuya, so um, they do. So they'll see the. So, full... so far, we're following the same itinerary as Trey, basically. Uh, yeah, so yeah. far. Um, but uh, with Tepuya, because they have a different experience at Tepuya, so they are, they see the Maori performance. What? Uh, the cultural performance they get to experience a hangi there and they get to see the um the kiwi birds sanctuary aspect of it that they have there too so that's slightly different to stray where stray was there like was basically seeing geothermal um features by night um Hakuto also has hobbiton included so that's great if you're a big Lord of the Rings fan. Maybe not so great if you don't really care about seeing that. Um, next up, they also have um, a greenstone carving, or otherwise known as Punamu carving, which they do in Franz Josef, um, which is a really sort of unique uh, Maori souvenir that you can carve for yourself. And yeah, it's a really cool experience. Um, they also do a 
greenstone, keeping on the greenstone theme, a factory tour in Hokitika. So, you know, when you've made your own crappy work, you can see how the pros do it. Um, you'll see master carvers. Um, yeah. it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a gift shop uh, kind of area where, where yeah. you go. Like, you, you, can, you can go do this on your own as well. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's, but uh, usually, it's pretty cool to see them doing it. Yeah, so usually you would have to pay a little bit yourself to sort of see the master carvers at work, but they do include that as well. And actually, it's the other way around. You do see that before you do your own carving, so maybe you'll get some inspiration to do better. Um, and then they also do the uh, Waka Paddling Experience in Abel Tasman. So this is going on sort of a, a fiberglass modern version of a of a Maori Waka and doing a paddling um, sort of sort of lesson and paddling around one sort of bay uh, near Split Split Apple Rock. It's Split Rock, or Split? yeah, Split Apple Rock um, at Abel Tasman. And then finally they have the Cook Straight Ferry included in the prices as well. All right, so when it comes down to the rest of the inclusion, they include no meal except for breakfast. So all yeah. the breakfast included, but then nothing else. Uh, their regular price is 5,700 uh, New Zealand dollars, which brings them down to 284 price per day, comparing to Straight Journeys, which was 388 as a price per day. Um, all right, so let's do the pros and the cons, uh, as we were talking about. Uh, so Laura, what's the pros of Hacker Tours? So a good thing about Hacker Tours is that you can start um, in either Wellington or Auckland. So that gives you a bit more flexibility if you wanted to start in a different location to the usual location of Auckland, which most tours depart from. Um, there is a lot of emphasis on the Maori culture with Hacker Tours. So as you can see through all the different um, included activities there, they are very much um, Maori cultural focused. So that's that's, that's pretty cool. It's a, a different sort of unique selling point rather than just being like, oh, it's all about bungee jumps and whitewater rafting in New Zealand. But no, there is um, there is some cool Murray experiences as well. That's all included. Um, they also run various different um, types of tours. So they have the Hacker Plus tours, which is for a, a slightly older crowd, obviously a bit more expensive, staying in more you know, uh, more like motels, um, more like basically eliminating sort of the backpacker style rooms, you're getting a bit more, uh, you know, bougie accommodation, but not too bougie. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> no. And then finally they do uh, winter tours. So they do this in the theme of snowboarding. They also um, operate tours in winter as well. So basically you can have a, a sort of tour maybe cur curated to a specific interest of yours, which Hagatul sort of covers a lot of those different interests. All right, so when it comes to the cones, um, of course, uh, the first thing I'm going to mention is the lack of uh, a meal inclusions. Mm. Uh, they only include the breakfast, so that makes a big price difference for a lot of uh, people traveling, as you know, it can run down quite a fair amount of money. Um, the uh, other um, kind of cons to keep in mind is that, well, they are running a lot, a lot, a lot of different tours. They have a massive, massive inventory. It can be really confusing to find which tour you want. They also do run things things called um, kind of white labeled tools so some companies that you may not know are Hacker Tours they are basically using all the infrastructure from Hacker Tours to run um, uh, tour buses so basically as they started as a small group tour companies in New Zealand they expanded small locally yeah, run yeah small locally run they expanded to like becoming kind of a pretty big empire and so it's very easy to get lost and become a number right here and in fact, they've been recently bought by a large company called Intrepid Travel. And so we have seen and we've heard reports of a very, very big culture changes there in terms of service. So do be aware of that. Uh, it is not the small group local company run anymore. And so you may not, not get the vibe that you were after. Yeah. Um, all right. So that wraps up Hacker Tools, which was our number four. So let's move on to our number three which is flying kiwi. But kiwis don't fly, Laura. Oh, I realize they're probably not cast too much as a small group tour <laughs> with 26 passengers as their... Um, they usually have way less passengers. But they usually have way So less. I think that's why I left it here. But, yeah. yeah. So flying kiwi is, uh, they're quite different from anything else on this list in terms of, I think the main thing to know is their accommodation. So they actually travel with tents and you are staying mostly in campsites 
camping, although there is the optional um, add-on that you will have to pay for if you did prefer to stay in, say, a private cabin at a holiday park when available. But yeah, you're basically doing a camping experience around New Zealand, which of course can take you to some beautiful, um, you know, some very, you know, sleeping under the stars, beautiful yeah. environments, which a lot of people, you know, come to New Zealand for those beautiful landscapes. So Flying Kiwi basically gets you in those landscapes a lot more. Um, and yeah, so uh, talking about also what's included is a lot of food. So they do also do food a bit differently. They include all lunch, sorry, all breakfasts, pretty much all lunches and all dinners generally. There may be, it's more like, you know, it's more an exception on the days that they don't include that. Um, so how they work more is that they have um, tour guides that will cook you the meals. It's more of a, you know, a camp mentality. So you're at your, you're at your um, campsite with the tents and the guides are cooking you the meals or you're sort of working together to cook the meals, yeah. that sort of thing. So that's a bit different to um, a lot of other experiences or small group tours that we've talked about so far or are going to talk about. Um, but yeah, let's move on to what is included in their, in their experience other than food, of course. I'm just going to say hi to Vaya Zulu um, that's uh, asking if we're doing well. We're doing well and Adil says uh, please mention whether these tools and buses are wheelchair accessible as you go through the list. Pretty much all of them will cater to certain levels so you kind of have to contact the companies with the specific tool you're looking into uh, but none of them will say no. Yeah. Okay, inclusions of Flying Kiwi. Yeah, so uh, Flying Kiwi, they include the Cook Strait Ferry. Again, that's the ferry between the North Island and the South Island. They do some wine tasting in Marlborough, which admittedly isn't a very expensive thing to do on your own anyway, but that's included. Um, and uh, they do the Greenstone Factory Tour in Hokitika, similar to what I was um, explaining about with Hacker Tours, so they include that. And then something different that they also include are sports equipment. So they will take around with them like body boards, frisbees, etc. So basically you have like, um, basically in your downtime when you're staying at campsites and stuff, you can, you know, go to the beach and surf some waves on your body board or, you know, play a game, you know, play some game with some sports equipment, that sort of thing. You do also have the option, now this is a paid add-on, to hire a, um, a mountain bike and then you will travel around with that mountain bike. And this will be yours for the whole trip, exactly. so you don't have to reset it, which is the main difference. Yeah, so then you will be able to do mountain biking and hit some of the trails as you're traveling around, which the guides will sort of show you like where's a good place to... They'll basically cater to say like, okay, uh, anyone that's doing mountain biking, this is a good trail to go on. So you have that option as well, however, just to, that is not included, that is an extra paid yep. cost. Um, so yeah, that is the sort of paid activities that are included, except for the mountain biking, just wanted to mention that on the side. All right, so uh, the tour length for Flying Kiwi is 23 days to do both islands and the re re retail price is $6,700, uh, um, which brings it down as a cost per day of 291 New Zealand dollars. All right, so we're gonna do the pros and the cons. Uh, Morena Matua X, Morena means good morning in Maori, which is the local Morena. indigenous language in New Zealand. Okay, the pros of Wild Kiwi, Laura? Uh, of course. Uh, sorry, the pros of oh, Flying, Flying Kiwi. Kiwi. <laughs> sorry, I got confused this one. Wild Kiwi is the next one, spoiler. I know, they have too many similar names, these yeah. guys. Uh, so yeah, obviously the tent aspect, the camping is very unique, very different to the other bus tour companies or any other bus tour company in New Zealand, not just small group tours, but also the big group tours as well. And um, the fact that the sports equipment is um, supplied, the optional bike hire that I mentioned before. If you're a mountain biker, that's pretty that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, Hi, Alil. <laughs> and also, um, yeah, also the food. The, there's not any, basically it's pretty much all inclusive in terms of the food. There's no other bus tours that we um, mention on this list or pretty much in the whole of New Zealand that includes pretty much every meal included in your tour. So yeah. that is that is pretty cool. Um, and uh, actually this is more of a, I would say a con that maybe I'll just say at the end is that they only have around two departures per month, which is not much. They also offer the option to hop off the bus 
and get back on later but if you're waiting for like half a month to get back on maybe that's a bit too long for most people so that sort of um, hop on hop off mentality or that thing that they offer it's not actually, you know, it doesn't really work I don't know how it is, yeah, practically, I don't know how much yes. you would use that. I agree with that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the cons as uh, I'm the uh, party pooper right here and the team. <laughs> uh, all right, so one of the cons is the fact that, yes, all meals are included, right? But they're all kind of family style, mm. you make it together kind of meal, right? So you don't have that much options meal-wise. You don't experience New Zealand cuisine as per se. Um, so that that's kind of, um, that's kind of, remove a little bit of freedom on that right so that's the one thing uh, to keep in mind the second thing to keep in mind is the fact that the passenger type skews a little older from our experience at least um, so expect people in their 40s um, to be quite prominent within uh, the bus um, it's and it's also a lot of focus is on the mountain biking for example um, uh, so, so you know you will have a lot of people which are really into their mountain biking that will kind of do their tours um, the amount of inclusions that Laura listed, they're, they're pretty limited compared to a lot of other companies. And uh, lastly, tents as an accommodation is really not for everyone. Uh, yeah. Some people just don't want to do 23 days in tents. And it's, it's, it's absolutely fine. You can upgrade if you want to, but that comes at a cost. Um, so it's worth keeping in mind. They're still making it number three on our list of the best small bus tools yes. in New Zealand. So that's still pretty awesome. But number two, and I already kind of spoiled it since I just kind of like misspoke before. Number two is the company called Wild Kiwi. Laura, yes. tell us more about Wild Kiwi. Okay, so Wild Kiwi is pretty cool. I guess like their main sort of difference is their buses. Their buses are very snazzy. Um, they are. They like, do like to show off their buses on the uh, everywhere on the majors. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they have very nice, also very nice branding, and also like these sleek black Mercedes buses with you know plush leather seating on the inside. You have your own little charging USB port. You know, just these like little touches are a little bit more um, definitely flash packer compared to because although they're still say a, a backpacker bus tour. Um, they're more of a, you know, their bus experience basically makes it more flashbacker. It's just a little bit more like, so, you know, something a little bit special um, yeah. in terms of the transport that you're going in, which... And to be fair, yeah. you're spending a lot of time in the bus, so having high quality buses is a big setting point. So I understand why they're going yeah. down that road. Um, in terms of uh, group size, 18 is their maximum passengers, mm -hmm. which is uh, still still quite small. A little, it's, it's a bit bigger than some, but still pretty small. Um, in the grand scheme of things. Um, in terms of what's included, all breakfasts are included, so that's easy. Uh, they have three dinners on their national tour. Um, so yeah, that makes, that's quite a few nice, nice that you don't have to think about that for three nights on the tour. And then what else is included in terms of like activities? For doing the, the whole national tours, you will have your flight between Auckland and Christchurch included. So they're not taking the ferry between the North Island and the South Island. They're just kind of skipping down to um, to Christchurch. Um, they also yeah, like geographically wise, it's a very, very different bus tour. Yes, but, yeah. yeah, they do go to, they do things in a different sort of order to a lot of other tours. Um, what's also included is the Waiotapu Geothermal Wonderland. Um, that's kind of like the official name of Waiotapu. Um, and that is the famous geothermal park in Rotorua, famous for this. Um, you may have seen images of this sort, sort of orange ringed lake. Um, and yeah, that's the Waiotapu Geothermal Park, so you get to go there. And they also do wine tasting in Marlborough. Again, not a hugely expensive um, activity, but you know, it's kind of cool that that's included as well. So the combination of uh, a smaller bus um, and also extremely comfortable really bumped them up on our, on our list when we did our little ranking and our, our, our scoring and everything. It really bumped them up because you do spend a lot of time on the bus and that you, you know, you're in New Zealand to see, usually you're in New Zealand to see all the beautiful landscape that the country has to offer. So you may as well kind of see them in comfort and um, style. Um, so they take 21 days to do all around New Zealand. As Noah mentioned, all the breakfasts are included and three dinners are included as well. And the price is 5,887. Why? <laughs> um, but that's their price, which brings them to $280 
uh, per day, which is so far the cheapest on our list. Um, so, Laura, what are the main pros and the main cons? Oh, so the main but pros the, and the main pros. The cons. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, we've talked about the buses. They're very sexy buses pretty cool that's like they're you do like you have a good sexy bird i do you? i do um, <laughs> so yeah that's like the main selling point but it is quite cool that they you know on top of that in their in their sexy bus they're taking you to very stop saying the word sexy <laughs> bus <laughs> very different places so for instance they go over to golden bay which is not in the itinerary of yeah. any other bus tour that we um that we're covering especially in this list um, and yeah they have they usually have good vibes it is um, you know it's a younger crowd of, of backpackers but not like flashbackers you know, more flashbackers yeah so you know mummy and daddy paid <laughs> <laughs> all right so when it comes down to the cons uh, the inclusions are very little and that stems from the fact that they drive a lot around because they take you to much more places so you see more landscape but you have less act paid activities included if that makes sense um, uh, so yeah and so the next cons that comes with that is the fact that you do a little bit more driving and I think that's why Laura wasn't phasing it mm. so much more onto the, uh, the the sexy buses right because you do more driving with white kiwi now the reason why we put it so high on the list is because we tend to think you come to New Zealand only once and you want to see it all and so with their unique itinerary you get to see more things with that one so that wraps up number two on our list, which was Wild Kiwi. Now, Laura, surprise us. What is number one on our list of best small bus tours in New Zealand? Uh, so yeah, so our number one on the list is a company called Backyard Roadies. Um, so yeah, these guys are pretty new to the back to sort of the bus scene compared to like all everyone else that we've talked about. They were all very much like well established pre-COVID. But the interesting sort of story behind these guys is that they got started. Um, with their tours during the pandemic and they kind of fantastic time <laughs> to start a bus tour guys it, but but that's kind of like it really emphasizes more the local experience yeah. so they kind of got started showing locals around their own backyard and um, um, see well, I see what they did there um, but yeah um, but out of that that's actually made like a really good sort of like tour for international travelers as well to get a sort of more authentic experience of New Zealand with locals um, as well so that's pretty cool um, in terms of the group size um, this is one of the smallest group sizes that you'll get so it's 16 passengers is the maximum so it's quite intimate so yeah it is um, definitely definitely uh, qualifies for that small group experience um, in terms of uh, meals provided for their national tour that's all breakfasts included which is pretty nice and that's four dinners included as well so again that's, that's a, a bit more than like the average bus tour will have included in terms of meals okay what are the uh, different inclusions that they have as well uh, yeah, so the um, inclusions that they have is the ferry going between uh, Wellington and Picton. They are taking the Inter-Islander Ferry, which is the more sort of high-end ferry. Is that Ooh. still going? The Inter-Islander, the one that crowded, <laughs> ran aground. <laughs> it doesn't always run aground, but yes, it's still going. They have many boats. <laughs> Moving as as, on. As soon as I said that, I was just like, are they? Yes, they are. Okay, cool. Um, also, they do a tour of Tepuya. Again, we've talked about Tepuya a lot already from the other bus tours, but what's included with Backyard Roadies? Um, again, you are seeing Tepuya, the geothermal park, but you're also getting to have a cultural experience in terms of having a dinner there as well, which is included in the experience. So you get both like the activity and the food portion of it. Um, they also do an experience uh, doing a private sailing tour. So that's private to your group doing a sailing tour on Lake Topo. So that's pretty cool. Um, and also dinner is included during that experience as well. So that's um, a, a, quite a- That's unique, very unique, yeah, that's cool. A unique inclusion compared to others. Uh, Surprise me, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's everybody's favorite, Milford Sound. The Milford Sound cruise is also included in this tour. So that's really nice, you don't have to pay extra for that. Yep. Um, and also um, in Franz Joseph, they do the Greenstone carving experience um, 
yeah, in the at the Tekoha Gallery. So that's that's pretty cool as well. Again, getting some of that Maori cultural experiences that are a lot more hands-on, creating your own souvenir to take home with you. Um, so yeah, that's that's a pretty neat inclusion. All right. So um, as Laura mentioned, the group size is about 16. So the, re the regular price is 5,700 New Zealand dollars, uh, which brings down as a price per day at 2,271 dollars, which makes them the cheapest on this list. So now let's go over the pros and the cons. Laura, you take the pros, I'll take the cons. Yeah, so as I've already mentioned, they are the sort of smallest of the small group size that you can have for traveling in a small group tour around New Zealand. So that's certainly like, you know, hits the spot there. Um, it's a it's a nice safe tour, so you're kind of like some tours, I guess, with other backpacker tours is more like, you know, party all the time. Maybe the vibe is more like, you yep. know, people hitting on each other. Maybe you kind of don't want to be hit on for the whole time you're in New Zealand. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like a more sort of safer, sort of cool tour like that. Um, it's uh, also another aspect of it that's quite nice is that they have a mix of male and female guides. So you'll find that a lot of the other tours for New Zealand is very much an emphasis on mostly having male tour guides. So they have a different, you know, they have a mix. So that's quite nice. Um, it's a feels more like a in terms of the vibe it feels more like a genuinely local experience um, this is a you know it's a small and um, small locally run company so you're not dealing with like big corporations you are actually like when you are talking to them like emailing with them you are genuinely emailing with the you know the owner of the business that sort of thing so you're not like you know it's you're not just like a number on the tour bus like that's kind of kind of a nice sort of that's what you want from a small group experience i think yeah. um right so yeah i agree with that and basically some of those pros are going to be what creates the cons uh, for this uh, tour so first up they don't operate in winter so if you're planning on traveling in new zealand in winter which is june july and august it's just not happening yeah um, they don't operate in september as well yeah that's true yeah so kind of like the wider kind of winter uh, winter time right um and so and also um and out of all of them they probably are the one with the least amount of departures um, just because again they're small, smaller tools, they have a limited amount of guides, a limited amount of buses so you kind of want to get a spot, it's kind of like you look at the website and pick the date you can get and then you book your day off at work, your time off at work mm -hmm. rather than the other way around if you know what I mean right sometimes you can just kind of say oh I book my time off I'll pick a bus tour that's going to kind of be within those dates I think you kind of have to have the different approach um, with that yeah but you know that still make it uh, number one on our list for like just such a cool different vibe and much more local vibes yeah um, cool so that wraps up our five favorite uh, bus tours small group bus tours in New Zealand there's much more information for you on NZ pocket guide make sure to check it out and we are moving on now to the Q&A part of this video where you can ask us all your questions about traveling in New Zealand so uh, first up, I want to thank everybody for like clicking the like button and everything. That's a really good ratio right here. Everybody kind of showed up and clicked like. So I love that. Thank yeah, you very thanks, much. Yeah, thanks, guys. Machua is telling us a bit about the current weather in uh, New Zealand. It was absolutely horrible all night. We had thunder yeah. and lightning all night. Couldn't sleep all night. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, same for us when we woke up here in central North Island. It is a sunny and cloudy day. I did see Machua X put um, <laughs> sunny day. No, scratch that. A rain that cloudy and sunny day that's how quickly it changes <laughs> by the time you finish typing the sentence it has changed yeah uh, but yeah uh, Halil, Via Zulu, uh, Tikis, Adil if you have any questions just go ahead and uh, let us know we're here to help you plan your trip to New Zealand um, so obviously we we rank the, those kind of uh, bus tours uh, for, for New Zealand and everything like that but uh, yeah would you always choose a small bus tours over a big bus tour you think like because I was mentioning I, I didn't want to talk about the, the yeah. top deck or the Contiki or the Kiwi experience, all this kind of bulk of stuff, right? Yeah. Would you always pick small versus big, or is there any option at that time when you would pick big? Mm, that's, an, that's an interesting question because I have done both. Yeah. And there is always pros and cons. Um, but yeah, I think. I tend to have liked the the vibe, but when you're on a small group tour, you usually are hanging out with like everyone on that tour. But if you're on a 
um, a big group tour, you're usually like, you separate into your separate groups or, you know, just one person that you like or whatever. And that's kind of more the vibe. Laura, out of a bus of 60, she likes one person. One person. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's kind of like how my experience has always been doing these like, you know, small group versus big group. Um, but in terms of like the places that they visit, they're usually, you know, they're usually somewhat the same or we'll just have like, okay, um, a large Kiwi experience bus will go to River Valley, which is, you know, somewhere quite different and off the beaten track, but also Backyard Roadies goes to River Valley as well, which is, you know, different and off the beaten track. So there's, yeah, like you can usually find buses, like a, a big group bus tour equivalent in terms of itinerary. Um, so yeah, when you're choosing between the two, it's definitely more to go for the vibe of the bus tour that you want to go for. Yeah, and so, and I feel like the way we chose like the bus tours, um, uh, anyway, I feel like we picked like on the top, and I think that's the, the way we, we think as well, we picked the two most unique itineraries yeah. to, to go to go from the top, right? Because there are some that, you know, say they go off the beaten track and all those kind of things, but it kind of usually follows the exact same method, the exact same pattern all around New Zealand, right? So is is was itinerary like the main reason that you kind of chose like the, the your ranking when you did your ranking? Um it was it both um the itinerary but also value in terms of inclusions as well. That's true. Mm -hmm. So value you know like if you're getting um you know a good amount of meals in is quite nice that you don't have to be thinking about that every single night of your trip. It's not too hard to think about but it's just like a nice little treat. Hope my head is thinking about, <laughs> oh, about no, potatoes. I think about what I'm gonna eat tonight. Um, also, yeah, like just just some of those like included activities that are usually they're usually the things that everybody wants to do as well. So um, that like that's quite what was quite nice. For instance, like the Milford Sound Cruise, if that's included in your tour, everybody wants to do the Milford Sound Cruise. So it's like inclusions that actually make sense as well. There's some inclusions that are like maybe specific that not everybody wants to do, like Hobbiton, for instance. Like Hackathons includes Hobbiton, but I know there's a few people that aren't too fussed about Hobbiton and usually like when they are on tours where there's an option to do Hobbiton or not about half the tour will not do it so yeah, yeah. you know like um, for my rankings like I ranked some places like some ones that included activities that everyone can enjoy a bit higher up as yeah, well. That makes sense. So when it comes down to inclusion, there was some uh, some very kind of obvious things like everybody will transfer you from the North Island to the South Island, but they all use it as a setting point, right? Yeah. They all say, oh, we do the Cook Strait cruise. <laughs> yeah, technically, it's the ferry you can't yeah. have to, right? <laughs> technically, you like you, it is a paid activity. It's a very scenic cruise, and, yeah. but you know, I think there are some tour companies out there that do make you pay for those things so yeah. it's kind of just nice to know that okay like that's all sorted for me and, yeah. Yeah. and there's also a bunch of activities which are included but we know as you know being traveling around that they're basically worth very little yes. like uh, you mentioned you hinted at it during the wine uh, wine tasting in Malibu, wine tasting in Marlborough like some um, cellar doors will basically charge you like 10 bucks to do a wine tasting or sometimes if you go to the right places it's free yeah um, so you know those things obviously have very minimal costs the you know taking a tour of the Greenstone uh, factories in Hoktika is quite a minimal cost it's as It's a well. gift shop! <laughs> it's a gift shop! <laughs> it is, but it's just yeah. like basically having, instead of looking for a window at the Master Carvers, which is what, you know, the riffraff uh, like us do. Uh, but on these bus tours, yeah. you'll actually go in and just, you know, you can ask the carvers some questions and that sort of thing, which, you know, you can sort of work that out yourself. Um, if you are traveling independently, but yeah, so those sort of things are very minimal in terms of like the value of what that tour is. Also, you will, as you like, with all the inclusions that we talked about, and um, the we talked about all the paid inclusions, but when you are actually looking on the websites of these bus tour companies, you will see them in like saying free activities as an inclusion, which yes. is good because they're providing the transport to get there. Usually, obviously, if you're doing that by yourself, you are having to, you would have to pay fuel, you'd have to get yep. the logistics down to get to those places. Or even just a shuttle, which can bring you down a bunch of money as exactly. well. Exactly, so um, there is obviously value to get to some of these free spots, that is really good, but it's just, it's just important to note that 
For instance, um, I did see on one of the tour companies saying like, oh, all your national park fees are paid. Uh, there is no national there park, is no fees, national in New park Zealand. fees in New Zealand, for instance. So, you know, just those sort of things is like, yeah, there are a lot of free experiences included. Like they'll take you to the free experiences in the bus tours, but basically everything that I mentioned as a pay, these were all paid activities that usually you just have to pay something for to do. And that's what's included. Indeed. All right, so um, this is the end of this uh, live show. Thank you very much for joining us. Hit all the button that YouTube wants you to hit. Check nzpocketguy.com if you want more information. Join us on Patreon if you want uh, our personal advice to plan your trip to New Zealand. And speaking of Patreon, we do a weekly group call, which is happening in 15 minutes. So I will join everybody in the group call in 15 minutes. Everybody, we'll see you back next week. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye.